The Wisconsin Badgers travel to Piscataway, New Jersey this Saturday to take on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Rutgers, in the midst of what might be its best season in a decade, is trying to get right after a tough 14-7 loss to Nebraska, while Wisconsin is trying to keep it rolling following its first complete win of the Luke Fickle era, winning 52-6 to over Purdue. Two teams where vibes could not be any more different right now. So what's going to happen? I wanted to ask my good pal, Aaron Brightman of the Scarlet Faithful, and we welcome him into the show here on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with us, Six Pack, the Scotty Six Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kendrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kendrick Stumbrus. I cover the Wisconsin Badgers for Athlon Sports, and you can also find the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. Aaron Brightman of the Scarlet Faithful is one of the go-to resources uh, for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, a very good pal of mine. If you know the show, you know his face. You've seen him here before, before Wisconsin played them in basketball last year, before the Big Ten tournament we had Aaron back on, uh, and I'm really looking forward to this great conversation um, that you all get to listen to here. A Aaron is an awesome resource. We had an awesome conversation. And I think you're going to learn a, a thing or two about this Rutgers Scarlet Knights team, which has some faces on it that will be a little familiar to Wisconsin Badgers fans uh, and a little familiar, not in a good way necessarily. Uh, so thank you all for joining. If you want to listen to more of this uh, on our previous show, we had an interview with FIBA Hall of Famer, New Zealand all-time leading scorer for their national team, Kirk Penny. If you would like to listen to that interview, uh, and if you have not yet, you can subscribe to our premium subscription tier for just 10, or sorry, for just $5 a month. Uh, not trying to double it up on you, don't worry. We're just $5 a month at scanny6pack.substack.com. You can also listen to that through Spotify. Uh, so get attuned to that. Get our subscribers-only notebook from Open Practices for the Wisconsin Badgers football team, Wisconsin Badgers basketball team, and so, 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 so much more, including a subscribers-only chat for just $5 a month by heading to scannysixpack.substack.com or by subscribing via Spotify. Without further ado, let's talk Badgers. Let's talk Scarlet Knights. It's Aaron Brightman of the Scarlet Faithful coming up next. And now we welcome into the show returning guest, returning champion, Aaron Brightman. Aaron, thanks so much for coming back on the Scotty Six Pack Podcast. Aaron Brightman of the Scarlet Faithful. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, big game this weekend for both programs. And uh, excited to be here to talk about it. Um, early, earlier this this season, I you you and I had a brief interaction on on Twitter talking about um some of Rutgers injury losses and how that's a big effect on two teams who might be going into this game thinking there's potential bowl eligibility on the line. Now uh, Rutgers got a big win early in the season over Virginia tech, which has helped it get there a little bit. I think this is probably a, a pivot point for Wisconsin to get to a bowl game this, this season. They have to host Oregon and Penn state at home. That's going to be really difficult unless the travel gets to Oregon. Um, and their kind of toss up games are both on the road between Iowa and Nebraska. I, I am looking at this as a pivot point game for Wisconsin in terms of whether or not they are able to get to a bowl this year. Wh where is Rutgers standing in terms of its season motivation? What, what is this game going to mean uh, for Rutgers season in the grand scheme of things? Yeah, great question. Uh, this, there were high expectations coming into this season. Uh, so many returning starters back for Rutgers. Greg Shiano's fifth season, uh, the, the most favorable schedule they've ever had as a member of the big 10 you don't have to play now no longer a member of the Big Ten East, so you don't play Michigan, Penn State, Ohio State year after year after year. Uh, you also don't have Oregon on the schedule. You also don't have Iowa on the schedule. So much more favorable, manageable schedule. They were projected going into the season to have nine one-score outcomes. So a lot of toss-up games on the schedule, but with the veteran team they have, with what we perceive as an upgrade at quarterback with Kyle Manungai, the leading rusher from the conference last year back, Certainly high expectations. Uh, their best player, in my opinion, on the defensive side, Mo Ture, suffered a season-ending injury before the year. That was a big blow for the defense. There's been a lot of injuries on the defensive side, even coming into the season. So it took them a little while to get their kind of bearings and their feet under them, their legs under them, 
Uh, and we saw a breakout performance against Nebraska, which brings hope. But overall, in terms of this schedule, in terms of this season, you know, there's a lot of fans that, that think nine or ten wins is possible. You know, Rutgers was kind of a trendy sleeper pick uh, in the preseason amongst the national media. That got people's hopes up as well. So that loss to Nebraska is certainly deflating with such a poor offensive performance. And now you're 4-1. and one. You have Wisconsin coming in at home. You've never beaten them. Big thing talking about Rutgers before the season is, you know, you're hosting Washington, uh, you're at Nebraska, you're hosting Wisconsin, three schools you've never beaten. So to get kind of, you know, up to the uh, step up another rung or two in the Big Ten, you have to start beating these programs. And for Rutgers, there's probably never been a better chance to knock off Wisconsin. So I think this is actually a must win for them, not necessarily in terms of making a bowl, but if they want to actually achieve their ceiling for what we think this team can do this year if you want to get to nine or ten wins you have to beat wisconsin in this spot yeah uh someone who's, whose goal is <laughs> nine or ten wins uh but better be good enough to beat this battered version of oh, a wisconsin team whatever you think of it now um i want to talk about a lot of that returning production because a lot of it is on the defensive side um what has this defense been able to do so well this this season Obviously, Dylan Rayola is still a true freshman, but Rutgers holding that offense in check from Nebraska last last week. What what has the defense for Rutgers done so well this season? Well, one thing they did very well against Nebraska that they had not done well prior to was getting more pressure from their front four. Aaron Lewis has been great all year. Uh, he's been, you know, a stalwart for the defense uh, for many years now. Uh, and uh, they were able to get four sacks in the game, and they only had four sacks coming into the uh, game from the entire season. So that was a big part of it. Consistent pressure uh, from pretty much, you know, their entire rotation. Uh, they were able to put Raiola into spots, kind of uncomfortable uh, positions. Uh, that interception he had, uh, they read it perfectly. Uh, and they're just, you know, they're a physical defense. They always have been. Uh, but it was a different game plan against Nebraska. They, they really looked to throw different looks at Rayola. You know, the previous week against uh, Washington, you faced Will Rogers, fifth year quarterback, extremely accurate, uh, where they really kind of they, they created pressure, not as effective in terms of getting to the quarterback, but kind of forcing Will Rogers to have to throw to certain parts of the field where they were designed to be there. And although they had a lot of missed tackles in that game, uh, they really didn't allow anything other than one big play in that game, which really allowed them to win uh, because they, they were very effective in, in uh, Washington, third down defense, forcing them uh, to, you know, uh, in some t third and longs, they were unable to convert. They were very effective in the red zone. Washington was in the red zone four times, only allowed one score. So they've been very good with red zone defense. They've been very good in terms of bending, but not breaking defensively. Uh, they've given up a lot of yards uh, prior to Nebraska. Where Nebraska game, we saw them kind of be that dominant unit. We thought a big part of that is getting healthy. Uh, they've had a lot of key players dealing with stuff. Wesley Bailey on the other edge of Aaron Lewis. Tyreen Powell, uh, star linebacker, just now his third game back. Uh, lost to Ray, as I mentioned, but you've had a lot of inexperience at linebacker. That's been part of the issues. Uh, and then in the secondary, Robert Longerbeam, the best cornerback. He only played three snaps against Nebraska. Not sure what his availability is going to be. Uh, and you also have Flip Dixon, who was a, a real surprise last year, and uh, ar arguably their best uh, defensive back last season, uh, has been banged up as well. So they seem to be getting healthier as a unit uh, and kind of getting that rotation uh, a little bit deeper on the defensive line. Uh, so Wisconsin's a new challenge, but it was very uh, encouraging to see them play as well as they did against Nebraska. Yeah, I know Wesley Bailey was injured earlier in the year too, wasn't he? And they're, yeah. they're all okay. Yeah, they're all still <laughs> he's, getting he's, up to speed there. I would imagine. Yeah, he's, he's playing. He played about thirty snaps against Nebraska. He doesn't play every snap, um, but yeah, he missed the first game, and uh, you know last year he played uh, banged up the whole year. He, he's he's their fastest guy off the edge. And when he's hurt, he typically loses that that kind of extra gear, which has been a, an issue for them. Mm. So uh, I'm not exactly. I, I think he's been dealing with it the whole season once again. But um, he's had he's had some moments. But he is obviously a big player for the defense. Should be a a unique challenge for uh, Wisconsin offensive line, where their left tackle J Jack Nelson uh, said he was feeling a little bit of hip tightness um, at the end of the game against Purdue too. So depending on what edge, um, a guy like. Uh, 
Wesley Bailey is lining up on could could be could be an interesting matchup. Um, in in terms of where the offense is at, Kirk Shiraka, a name Wisconsin Badgers fans are familiar with from his time in Minnesota, comes comes in. Where has this offense for for Rutgers shined so far, and what what is Kirk Shiraka trying to establish as as the sixty minutes of the game rolls on? Yeah, I mean, the big difference this year is Ethan Kelly Fannis, at quarterback. He had been very good up until the Nebraska game. He really struggled, uh, but they were much more efficient in the short to intermediate pass game. Uh, they've been very effective in play action. Obviously, a key to that is them been jumping out to leads. They were they led Virginia Tech 14 to uh, zero. They led Washington 14 to three. Uh, one thing that's been different is that this year Rutgers has been able to capitalize on opponent mistakes and that starts with the offense in terms of uh, just being a, being having an actual pass game which they didn't have uh, previously with Gavin Wimsett they've always been able to run the ball but they're a lot more unpredictable they're throwing on first down more uh, Shiraka you know recruited Cali Manis to Minnesota uh, as you mentioned pre- in, in, in uh, my podcast you know Cali Manis's best career game was at Wisconsin two years ago. Uh, but, you know, Cali Manis did not have the same type of production last year at Minnesota. And they just have a really good connection, I think. I think Shiraka really understands his skill set uh, and has been very good with play calling uh, in terms of putting him in positions to to succeed. Uh, and that's what made kind of the Nebraska game so strange that we're running the ball very effectively early on, kind of went away from it, put a lot on Cali Manis. Uh, the offensive line, you know, which we'll get to, uh, suffered a big injury prior to that game and they just weren't nearly as effective and i think that did impact uh Calic manis and he also had a tendency he's been uh, a little bit of an issue throwing behind receivers but overall i think you have more balance in the offense you have more playmakers uh in the past game you have a more accurate passer and you've seen shiraka have more diverse play calling and being a little bit more unpredictable uh which has obviously made this a better team uh, Kelly McManus, of course, the, the quarterback who threw, I think his only career game of over 300 yards came against <laughs> Wisconsin on uh rivalry weekend. The last game with Jim Leonard as the acting head coach for the Wisconsin Badgers just a day before, uh, we get the Rittenberg report of, uh, Luke fickle heading to Madison. Uh, although last year in that game at, at Minnesota, only 16 of 28, uh, 167 yards, a touchdown and a pick. So this defense certainly is very familiar with Ethan Kelly Hickmanis. Um, we should mention Kyle Manungai here and everything that he's done this season to establish the running game for Rutgers, uh, the Scarlet Knights leading the Big Ten in time of possession, I believe. Not not Big Ten West esque numbers getting creeping into the 38, 39. I think it's around 35 uh, minutes per, per game, if, I, if I'm right there. Does that sound about right to you? Yes. Yeah. Um, but tell me, tell me about Kyle Minungai. How, how does he change the game as a running back for, for the Scarlet Knights? Well, what makes Minungai so effective is that, you know, he, he doesn't actually need consistent blocking from the offensive line. I mean, his <laughs> best runs against Nebraska all, you know, came from cuts behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, he's a little bit, you know, he's very elusive. Uh, he's patient. He kind of waits for, you know, even if, if something doesn't open up, he's kind of able to, figure out angles and how to get through defenders and around defenders. He's really dangerous off the edge. Uh, and I think just in terms of his confidence and, and what they do as a, an offense, it all centers around him. Uh, and it, it's helped him at times to have a more effective pass game. But at the end of the day, the bread and butter is to go with Manungai. Sam Brown has been really good as well as the number two option. Um, but Manungai is just able to do things that, you know, you can't teach. It doesn't show up, you know, in terms of, uh, skill set per se it's just an intrinsic thing that he can do in the moment and you know he was able to wear teams down last year he got a little beat up at the end of the season and then after that rest before the bowl game you know he just dominated miami down the stretch in that fourth quarter to get that victory uh and that's been the benefit of having sam brown is being able to, to take a little bit of the load off of him uh but for him you know he's gonna have plenty of runs where it's two three yards here and there uh but his ability to break uh break plays make big plays uh with his feet he's caught the ball a little bit more this year as well uh he's just a dynamic playmaker uh and, and gives this offense you know so much confidence when he has that the ball in his hands I, I want to talk about the the 
back end of Rutgers defense R- really quickly here. You mentioned um, Menongai doesn't necessarily need a ineffective passing game uh, to, to get going. I, I think that's something Wisconsin is going to need in this matchup to keep its running running backs run, running hard, uh, particularly given that I think their second option there is a freshman. He, he's going to need a little bit of room of room to run don't have a lot of confidence in a true freshman coming in and running and gets, you know, eight, eight man boxes. What, what do you think of the Rutgers secondaries so far this year? Um, is, are they running a lot of zone? Are they running a lot of man? We saw Braden Locke just carve up a, a pretty defense that runs a lot of man coverage this weekend. Uh, although not very good defensive backs, in my opinion, on that unit. Um, do you expect the Rutgers secondary to be able to hold up against this, this Wisconsin air raid or something adjacent to it attack <laughs> yeah i mean they, they shanners talked about wanting to have a little bit more of a deeper rotation there uh a redshirt freshman bro Moscow has gotten more reps uh you also have eric rogers who's kind of stepped up uh with the absence of max melton who's now in the nfl mm-hmm. uh and robert longer again that's a big question mark for this game how healthy will he be uh but you know Rutgers plays a base four two five defense uh, and, you know, they did play a lot of zone against Washington, going against such an accurate quarterback in Rodgers. They can bring pressure from the secondary. They like to blitz uh, with, you know, uh, Desmond Ibanusin or Shaquan Loyal, uh, who are, you know, safeties and uh, big physical players. They've been really pr- pretty good throughout their careers in limiting big plays. They're relatively good tacklers. Uh, they've had a little bit of an issue this year so far, Loyal, but uh, he's just he's just a playmaker. You know, he, he can uh, he's had multiple interceptions his career. He's returned them for pretty, uh, you know, he's had pick sixes. He's gotten uh, big returns uh, that haven't gone the distance. He had uh, he recovered that block punt on special teams last week against Nebraska. Got caught right outside the goal line. So he's a big time playmaker. He's made some big hits this year. Igbenusen as well. Uh, Flip Dixon was their best player last year in that secondary. He's still getting back to form. But, um, you know, they're they're a physical defense. Uh, they, they're, uh, you know, going to swarm to the ball and, uh, the secondary is a big part of that. So I have a lot of confidence in the secondary. I thought coming into the year, even with the defense, uh, you know, with the, once Teray went down, I thought the secondary was the, the strongest group, specifically the safeties, uh, coming into this season. So, yeah, I think you're going to see, uh, defensive coordinator, Joe Harris, Simiak give a lot of different looks to a quarterback like Locke. I think they did that with Rayola. They really uh, rendered him ineffective, and, and they're going to make Wisconsin try to beat them on the run. Um, if I tell you that you can't pick Kyle Minunga, who are you picking for Rutgers potentially have a big day, be be the X factor in uh, giving Rutgers a win? Well, I think, you know, their best receiver so far has been He's also playing, dealing with something. He only had one catch for 10 yards against Nebraska. I think that really hurt them in that game uh, because he's really stepped up the previous two games against Washington and Virginia Tech. And that leads me to my point, which is Demir Miller, uh, who was you know considered their number one receiver coming in. He's an FCS All-American from Monmouth, and uh, he hasn't really broken out yet. Uh, He has only had four catches for 50 yards in two previous games, but they can line him up all over uh, in the slot on the outside. Uh, He's got really good speed. Uh, I think they really need to prioritize him this week in the pass game. And I think he's someone that's due a big game. And I think that that could be a real key uh, for Rutgers to win. Uh, should, should be a lot of fun with uh, Wisconsin secondary that I think prides itself on the play of its defensive backs. Um, there's there's certainly two, maybe even three pros back there, uh, depending on N- Nizier Forkery and what, what he might be able to do and maybe maybe raise his draft stock uh, over the next few months. Um, this is a fascinating game to me to predict because the vibes could not be more different between these two teams right now. Uh, Wisconsin <laughs> right, riding high off of its first complete game in in two years and beating Purdue but of course Purdue is something like the very fringes of, of a Big Ten quality team um e- even in the 18 team Big Ten uh Rutgers of course four and one looking a lot better uh but coming off of a, a really deflating loss to Nebraska um do you think Rutgers walks walks away with with a win here uh who who do you have winning this game well, you know, that's a good question. I, I really do think it's a toss-up. Uh, I think the key to Rutgers, 
their game plan and how they like uh, to call the game from a, a playmaking or uh, a play call perspective uh, is grabbing that lead, right? And that's an obvious point. But Rutgers has always been when, when, when they can grab a lead, you know, they can lead with the run. They can do certain things defensively. Uh, and they, they're, you know, they, when when they don't turn the ball over, it's obvious. But you know, they, they're they they're able to uh, be much more effective, and they don't force things as much. When they start to fall behind, they have to emphasize the pass. They're just still, even with the improvement they've had in the past game, the, it remains to be seen how good of a comeback team they can be. Uh, and I think it's really gonna. I, th- I think you're gonna see Rutgers emphasize the run early on. Uh, you're going to see them try to capitalize on any mistake that Wisconsin does make. Uh, and also, you know, touching on the offensive line, Brian Felter, their starting left guards after the year now, mm. he missed that first game against Nebraska, and you saw a big difference. They had three false starts. The offensive line's been really consistent up until that point. So that's an area of concern. So I, I think momentum could go either way here. You know, Shano talked about not letting Nebraska beat you twice, uh, needing to put that to bed. Uh, you're going to have a home crowd. It's a noon kickoff. It is Yom Kippur, so I don't think it's going to be a sellout uh, in Piscataway, but it should be a relatively good crowd. And this is a big game for this team. So it's a veteran team. I think emotionally they'll be able to bounce back. I think it's going to come down to, you know, nothing fancy other than execution. Uh, And and the more that Rutgers can play with a lead, the more that they can grind out time of possession. Uh, Can they make a big play on special teams? They They have a specific formula that works for them. They're not a big play team. They're not a come from behind team. Uh, they're a team that just kind of grinds you out and is able to wear you down in that fourth quarter, delivering body blows as they go. Uh, I think Rutgers will win. I'm not so confident. I'll give it maybe like a five or a six uh, that they can do it. I think they should, where, where the two programs are at this point in time, I think they should win the game. I think it's just a matter of, you know, can Wisconsin make a couple big plays early on and kind of change momentum uh, and, and then, again, it's about Rutgers capitalizing on any mistakes that they can force out of Wisconsin. It does feel like two teams, neither one of which has wants to have to rely on passing the ball. Um, right. Wisconsin obviously showed a lot more of a, a penchant to throw the ball against Purdue. Uh, but like I said, I I'm, think that that defense is very, very, very suspect. Um, and... We, we might see this game just still be the kind of same Rutgers, Wisconsin, who, who can grind it out game that we've seen in the past that except for the fact that I don't think Wisconsin's going to just grind it out of the ground and blow out the Scarlet Knights this time. I, I don't have any reason to believe that Wisconsin can put it together for 60 full minutes against a, a quality team, because I have not seen that over the last two, maybe even three seasons. Uh, I, I think Rutgers wins this game. I, I think maybe by a touchdown. Um, but after last week, I guess nothing would surprise me. Uh, the, the one thing that you, you mentioned at the tail end of your answer there that we hadn't touched on is, is special teams. Um, Atticus Bertram's Wisconsin's punter is proving to have somehow some some magic or maybe the sun on his side, uh, an uncatchable punt. Do, do you have confidence in, in your punt returner to – to catch the ball every time uh, Atticus puts one off his foot because he's had three punts muffed in the last two weeks. However, maybe Wisconsin never punts at all. So you, you never know. Uh, not confident in the punt return. Uh, okay. Christian Dremble really struggled. Uh, two two kind of questionable returns against Nebraska. However, they did have two block punts. And that's mm. where, you know, Rutgers is, I don't know that stats in front, but, you know, the, traditionally one of the best special teams in terms of block kicks throughout Shiano's time, both this tenure and the prior tenure, uh, and they go for it pretty much on every punt. They're going for the block. Huh. So, uh, you know, they were able to get a lot of pressure on Nebraska in that game. They did give up a fake punt as well. Uh, so that will be something, you know, that maybe Wisconsin sees on tape uh, yes. that they try to replicate. But I expect, it was uh, you know, Rutgers is at its best when it's able to uh, get a block on special teams. Uh, last season, they had three and they converted all three for touchdowns on the block. So that was what was so killer about Nebraska is it got caught at the two, and they weren't able to punch it in, and that was a huge momentum shift in that game. So I look for, you know, if Rutgers can get a block in this game and kind of uh, change momentum, uh, that would be a huge play for them, and they're definitely going to go for it. I don't expect much in terms of the return game. 
Hmm. Yeah, I know there's no there, I know there's no numbers that show that Aussie punters are are blocked at a higher rate than um your conventional punting game, but there's something in the back of my mind that can't can't <laughs> convince myself to believe that those numbers are true for some reason. So that that will be that will be a good thing to start terrifying me uh, on on Saturday. <laughs> um, look, looking forward to that. What what about place kicking? Uh, is the, is there a, any reason to be terrified of of a big leg place kicker for for Rutgers? Well, that's uh, kind of a it's been a conundrum. Uh, Jake Patel was extremely accurate last year. He does have the ability to, uh, you know, he he's made a fifty yarder in his career. This year, it's been very up and down. Uh, you know, he missed a 36-yarder early in that Virginia Tech game. Uh, then Shiano brought him out for, was, I believe, a 53-yarder, uh, which he missed. And then he was able to bounce back and kick the game when he field goal just 25 yards, but still showed poise there. And then in the Nebraska game, you know, they, uh, they went for the fake on the first field goal attempt, uh, which was kind of mind-boggling happening so early in the game. And I, I think it, you know, it doesn't help Patel's confidence as a kicker. And then they brought him out there for another 50-plus yarder with high winds, and he, he knocked it off the post. So mm. he needs to get some momentum. I think anytime he's going to line up in this game, Rutgers fans are going to be nervous. I don't think there's any reason to panic long-term with him. I think he is a very good kicker. I think the, the staff hasn't done him many favors in terms of the situations they put him in. So uh, this could be kind of a more normal game per se, uh, where if Rutgers, you know, can sustain some drives, but maybe stall out a little bit, uh, that he'll get plenty of opportunities, you know, in that 25 to 40 yard range. And if he does, I have confidence that he'll come through anything over that, you know, with just how it's gone so far, I think, you know, it's kind of up in the air. Yeah. sounds a lot like the place kicking game uh, by Nathaniel Vacos uh, here in Madison as well. Um, and if there were going to be a fake, uh, I think Rutgers is a little too late on that because Western Michigan in week one schemed up, found the tape uh, that the football team had only been running the same uh, field goal protection coverage, basically the, the, the same exact thing every single kick since Luke Fickle got here. Uh, Western Michigan figured that out over the offseason and ran that fake to great success uh, in, in week one. So I imagine that that has been fixed. Um, but who knows? You, we have seen it schemed up against this team once before the season. Uh, Aaron, thanks so much for coming on the show. Is there anything I should have asked you? Anything that we should have talked about uh, before Greg Schiano's Rutgers Scarlet Knights squad welcomes in uh, the Badgers that we have not talked about yet? No, I think, you know, it's an interesting coaching matchup. Obviously, Fickle and Schiano knowing each other from their time in Ohio mm -hmm. State. So I think it will be a real chess match there. And also in terms of Phil Longo going against Joe Harris Simiak. Uh, you know, and uh, Harris Simiak with his time at Minnesota. I mean, Wisconsin will certainly be familiar with the Rutgers coaching staff, uh, which, you know, doesn't necessarily mean it's an edge per se, but I think it will be a real chess match. I think the, the coaching in this game is going to be really interesting to watch. Shiano got a lot of heat for kind of some of the decisions, even in that win over Virginia Tech. They were up big, made some questionable decisions. He's been uncharacteristically uh, adventuresome, a little bit aggressive at times when he's typically more conservative. So it's going to be interesting. I could see a much more conservative approach in this game, uh, being at home, being a new kickoff, the weather will be so, so, uh, and just in terms of, you know, anticipating a grinded out game, they're going to want to minimize mistakes, especially after the offense is performance last year. So, or last week, excuse me. So I think it's going to really come down to a few key decisions by the coaching staffs. So I think that's something definitely to, to pay attention to. Yeah, should, should be something to watch there. I, I know that coming out of the first half this weekend against Purdue, uh, the Wisconsin coaching staff really wishes that they had handled some their their timeout management a little bit differently. They they nearly uh, ran out the clock on themselves instead of scoring a touchdown at, at the end of that half, which, which they did convert and did score a touchdown. But because of some miscommunication between Luke Fickle and Phil Longo, they, they nearly didn't get the ball. They nearly didn't get a timeout off when they needed to snap the ball and, and fortunately they got the ball snapped and just scored instead um while the clock was running so i think there are some other decisions in the locker room in madison as well that the coaching staff wishes they would have back uh and luke fickle said, said as much th this past week e even though it worked out he said they know that it could have gone ter terribly wrong otherwise so yeah should, should be a, a fascinating battle uh aaron please tell the people where to find more of you. I also recorded uh, an episode on Aaron's show, The Scarlet Faithful, uh, that 
should be a great watch, great listen as well. Uh, so please go and find that. But Aaron, tell, tell the fine people where to find more of your excellent work covering the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, which should be a force in the Big Ten this year in basketball too. So it should be a great, great, great value add uh, to your to anyone's reading for that. Well, let's let's hope so. Knock on wood with basketball and football as well. <laughs> but I'm at Aaron underscore Brightman, uh, B R E I T M A N, and uh, on YouTube, uh, the Scarlet Faithful and Aaron Brightman, and then uh, my podcast wherever you can listen. Uh, Apple uh, and uh, Spotify and any other platforms. Uh, I do a daily podcast, only uh, daily Rutgers podcast there is. So uh, I've, I, I no longer do the writing. I just do the podcast now uh, with my busy schedule around in my life. But uh, it's, it's uh, you know, I've, I've been a Rutgers fan for 40 plus years and since I was a little kid and, uh, you know, have a career in New York. So this has been a lot of fun. Uh, passion project to cover uh, Rutgers exclusively the last decade. And, uh, you know, this is certainly a highly anticipated year for Rutgers sports. Uh, while we're in the middle of influx, we have no, no, uh, we have an outgoing president. Uh, we don't have an athletic director. So it's never dull as a Rutgers fan. I have a saying it's never easy as a Rutgers fan. And there's plenty uh, reasons to be unsettled about this matchup on Saturday against Wisconsin. So we'll see what happens. But thanks so much for having me. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. How, how's, the, how's the field hockey team this year? Field hockey still doing stuff? Struggling a little bit this year. Uh, they, they, had, they did have a big ranked win, but they're, they're not doing as well. But soccer, women's soccer has bounced back, and they're uh, mm. they're undefeated uh, in Big Ten play right now near the top and uh, looking uh, back to kind of the, the program. They've been the most successful program that Rutgers has had over the last decade plus. Okay, good. Um, I, I, as listeners of our show know, uh, we we love the non-revenue sports. Uh, give yes. give them all of our attention I, too. I do it uh, too. <laughs> good, uh, Aaron. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you once again to Aaron Brightman of the Scarlet Faithful. Uh, love having him on the show. It just a, a great, down to earth, very, very, very kind guy. Uh, go go find Aaron. Um on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Aaron Brightman. That's A-A-Ron underscore B-R-E-I-T-M-A-N. Uh, also, he's a Packers fan, by the way. Lives in New Jersey. Uh, he is a Green Bay Packers fan. So, uh, good people. Very, 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 very good people. Uh, go listen to The Scarlet Faithful wherever you are listening to this show or find it on YouTube. That's going to do it for, for today's show. Uh, we will be back talking probably some football, probably some women's hockey as we cover the top three matchup between Wisconsin and Duluth. Uh, I will be in Madison for that this weekend. Really looking forward to it. Um, so thanks as always for listening to the Scotty six pack podcast. You can go find our premium subscribers only content, including an interview this week uh, with FIBA hall of famer, Kirk Penny and Wisconsin basketball assistant coach Kirk Penny uh, up right now. You can get that for just five bucks a month by subscribing scunny six pack.substack.com or finding it on Spotify. Until we talk to you all again very soon on Wisconsin.